Hi, this is David of Bionic Turtle with a quick look at the Spearman's rank correlation. Typically when we read correlation, it's technically a Pearson correlation coefficient. The Pearson correlation coefficient is popular but has several pitfalls including one, it requires cardinal numbers like these for each of the variables, that is to say actual quantities, and two, the really limiting assumption is it presumes a linear relationship between our variables. So the Spearman's rank correlation, one way to look at it is that it's more flexible. To illustrate, I just made up data for 10 hypothetical companies, company A to company G, company J. So this is a small sample size, n equals 10, and then I've got two variables here. I also made these up. First, the price to earnings ratio or PE ratio. And I've already got them sorted here or ranked in order from lowest to highest. Company A has the lowest PE, 10.2, and Company J has the highest price to earnings ratio of 15.1. My other variables is credit rating. I made these up as well. So each of these credit ratings has, each of these companies has a credit rating. For example, Company B here has double B minus. That is a speculative grade rating or junk rating. And then Company J, for example, has a rating of A, and that's an investment grade rating. Now the credit ratings are not cardinal numbers, but they are ordinal numbers, meaning they do have they are they do have a relationship in terms of a hierarchy, but I can't actually quantify the distance between them. Because the credit ratings are not cardinal, I can't use the Pearson correlation coefficient. But because both of my variables are, are at the very least ordinal, I can use the Spearman's rank correlation. And really, it's the same as the Pearson correlation coefficient. So all I've done is we take the source data here and then translate it into the ranks. So for the PE ratios, I already had those in order. Company A, the order here is from uh, lowest to highest. So Company A had the lowest PE ratio, so here's its rank, one. Company B has the next highest PE ratio, so its rank is two. And so on up to Company J with the highest PE ratio. So I already had them sorted or ranked in PE by PE. And then the credit ratings, here's the numbers, these again, are not cardinal, they are ordinal, so I can express them as a rank. So if we look here at company B with a double B minus speculative grade rating, it has the lowest in the set, so I give that rank of one. And then company D here has double B, so it gets rank of two. Company A has BB plus rank of three, and so on, up to company H, double A minus, which happens to have the highest credit rating, so it gets a rank of 10. So you can see the key step here is all I've done is convert these ordinal labels into their specific rank. So now both variables are expressed in terms of rank. PE, lowest to highest. Credit rating, lowest to highest. Lowest, highest here. So notice the two advantages over the Pearson correlation coefficient. First, again, I don't need the cardinal numbers, I can deal with ordinal ranks. And second, importantly, technically, I don't need to assume a linear relationship. The Spearsman's rank correlation is a test of monotone dependence. So we say dependence is a broader class than correlation. And then once I have this now, calculating is just like Calculating is the same as calculating the Pearson correlation coefficient. I've got, I can use Greek row, and this is a formula FRM candidates definitely want to know. We use this a lot, or we see this a lot. Correlation equals covariance divided by product of the standard deviations. So I'm not going to go into covariance and standard deviation here, but notice I've calculated this straight off the data, covariance between the ranked variables here, is 6.45 and then I've got standard deviation for each variable here and because there are no ties I've got a standard deviation of 2.87 for each and then implementing here this what should be familiar the correlation formula I've got the covariance between the variables divided by the product of their standard deviations 
and so I get a 0 0.78. So be, this is rank data. I can say the Spearman's rank correlation is a fairly high 0 0.78. And you can see the Excel formula returns the same value. Now, if there are no ties here between uh, ranks, ties would happen if, uh, say, company D and company E both had a double B rating. So that would be a tie. If there are no ties, the simplest, the simpler version of this here is I can use six times the summation of the differences squared. So I've got the right here. I've got the difference in rank. I square that. That's the D squared. And then if I come down here, summation on that is the numerator. Divide by n, 10 times 10 squared minus 1. So you can see this fraction is implemented right here. And I get the same 0.78 for a Spearman's rank correlation. So this is the version of the formula I can use if there are no ties in terms of these ranks. And then this is the scatter plot here of where I got the Spearman's rank correlation of 0.78. And again, key advantage here is I didn't need to assume a linear relationship. But it is a test of monotone dependence. So this is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.